Yeah. Good evening, and welcome to the Scott, town of Scarborough's uh, planning board meeting on August 8th. And can we have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, there you go. Ms. Saunders? Here. Here. Ms. Mr. Bealey? Here. Ms. Auglis? I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> Mr. Fellows? Mr. Mazer? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. And Mr. Wood? Here. Thank you. Uh, the next agenda item is the approval of the minutes July 18th, 2016, which all of the board members should have received. Do I hear any comments or a motion? Move the approval. Motion to approve. Okay. A second. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Are you abstaining? My apologies. I didn't receive them in my packet. You didn't get them in an email? No, they were online. They were online. Yeah, they were online. Okay. Uh, okay. Agenda item number four. Jonathan Midori requests an advisory opinion of a miscellaneous appeal of a non-conforming use application to the Board of Appeals for 257 Payne Road, Assessors Mat, R40, Lot 15. Now you want to introduce this? Please? Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as you just noted, this is a uh, before the Board for an advisory opinion on a miscellaneous appeal. The applicant is seeking to add a shed to its existing residence, which is in the Haggis Parkway. Uh, Haggis Parkway District does not permit single-family homes, therefore the addition is considered an expansion of a non-conforming use. Um, so again, uh, they will be, uh, the applicant will be going before the Board of Appeals for a formal action, uh, probably I think he's scheduled to go there Wednesday night, but prior to the Board of Appeals taking it up, the Planning Board needs to provide an advisory opinion. So um, I've provided a memo that outlines the, or outlines the um, review criteria of Section 3, which is sort of a broadly, does it generally fit within the neighborhood type criteria, and then more specific details under Section uh, 4 of the ordinance lays out, as I just said, more detailed criteria uh, for consideration as you bear your opinion. Turn it back to you. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant here or representative? Please go to the podium. Uh, name, address, please. Jonathan Medor, uh, 257 Payne Road, Scarborough. Thank you. Well, it's open to you. Trying to put a shed on my house. As Jay said, this is because it's not conforming that he's before us uh, tonight. Uh, I'm not going to go individually. Are there any comments from the uh, from the board. I think this is pretty straightforward. I just have a quick one. Sure. Uh, the depiction uh, doesn't clearly indicate, is it going to be um, off the driveway or in place of parts of the driveway? No, there's a, it's like a, it's a horseshoe shaped driveway and mm -hmm. there's a front lawn in between it. So it's in that area. It's, it's in the lawn area yep. in between the horseshoe? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, there's no driveway there. Okay. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. right. Any other? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I looked at the uh, property uh, on uh, Google Earth, and even though it's um, in that the parkway zone, it's it must be just on the edge of it, I would think, right? Yep. And um, it, isn't there another single-family home between that and the actual parkway itself? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of single-family homes on that side of the road, yeah. right, putting um, this property, correct. I guess my only other question was, would be um, why would you put the shed there and not someplace else? Because of the stream that runs through the yard. There's a 75-foot setback okay. um, due to that. So that was the only place we could put it without having to go through the state and appeal with them. And it's just going to be a regular... Like, I just um, want, yeah, something to put, you know, lawnmower in. Okay. Right. So. 
I have no other questions. Okay. Any other comments? Um, we're not actually taking a formal vote because it has to go to the zone mm -hmm. appeals right, but uh, to send a message all in favor of, of the we recommend to the uh, Board of Appeals. That's unanimous. So, Jay, we, we said we'll, we'll send a unanimous. Thank you. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Item number five. East Grand LLC is requesting a sketch plan review for three East Grand Ave assessors map 22.123. Discussing is Roger, you're a voting member tonight. Mm -hmm. I should have mentioned that, I'm sorry. Um, th just for the board's purpose, we're, this is mainly a discussion tonight. We're not voting on anything. We're listening and making recommendations. Uh, so I want to make that clear at the outset for, for board members. Having said that, I'll turn it over to Jay as an introduction. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I had to just note this is before you for a sketch plan, which is an informal discussion. Um, and so just as an outline of where we, uh, where the project sits, this is in the TBC4 district, as well as the Shoreland Overlay district. Um, it's at the intersection of Pine Point Road and East Grand Avenue. Um, you'll receive staff's comments, um, of which we flagged a number of questions, which again, this being sketch plan, this is sort of the time to, for those questions. So uh, predominantly questions around um, compliance with, with those uh, zoning standards. I should also mention there's, uh, this property is in the FEMA flood zone as well. So um, we'll look for details moving forward in terms of how the uh, existing conditions of the site comply with those standards or its grandfathered nonconformity uh, fits. Um, there were questions regarding uh, sort of leak, a legal analysis of the use of the dwelling on site uh, in terms of uh, the applicants talked about having some employee housing in there. So we want to be sure that um, that's fully compliant with what the ordinance allows. Um, and then the final sort of legal issue that we had questions about was ensuring that the applicant can demonstrate um, significant or, or proper uh, evidence of control of the abutting properties that are uh, certainly integral to the development of this uh, uh, proposal, uh, whereas most of the uh, existing parking and access, or parking in particular, from those abutting lands. Um, in terms of site, uh, sort of our, our typical site plan analysis type items, um, you know, I think access and circulation are issues that, um, you know, clearly will need to be explored as this moves along. Um, and then the other item uh, that the applicant is beginning to have a discussion around is uh, the consideration for reduced parking on site. They're seeking a 40% uh, reduction in parking based on the proposed uses. Um, it looks like you know, our, our standards or our ordinance do, does allow for a number of different ways to get to reduce parking, but it seems like given this site that the Board of Appeals is probably going to be the likely approach they'll have to take. Um, Otherwise, they need to demonstrate that they could actually have all the house, uh, parking, just not build it. So just want to make the applicant aware that that's um, a likely <coughs> way they'll need to take moving forward. And then, obviously, and I'm sure the applicants are already thinking about this, just the type of analysis that would need to go into that much of a consideration and reduction in parking. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I would turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn it over to the applicant. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions, uh, joined by Susan Clough tonight, uh, the developer of 3 East Grand LLC, uh, as well as uh, Mr. Conroy is here as well. Um, as Jay mentioned, the parcel is located on the corner of East Grand Ave and Pine Point. Um, it's the current location of Conroy's Oil and Vehicle Service. Um, for the most part, um, it's one story on this side. This portion right here is a two-story um, with apartments upstairs and I believe the vehicle, vehicle service is on the, the first floor. Um, Jay also mentioned we're in the TVC4. A lot of the bulk and space standards um, 
they have setbacks. Um, the actual property, Conroy's property, is this triang uh, rectangular piece right here. Um, I believe we're grandfathered from the bulk, the most of the bulk and space standards because we're right up to the property line in most spots. The parcel that we're looking to develop is actually made up of three pieces. Um, the first is the, the Conroy piece. Um, there's a right-of-way out here. This is all part of the main DOT right-of-way. We have a license from the DOT to continue using that section for parking. Um, there's also going to be some landscape upgrades that's in conjunction with the town's um, uh, get this, the street upgrades at the open street, complete, street? complete streets. There we go. Thank you. Um, so there is going to be some, some areas for us to do some improvement and some landscaping there. Um, the third piece of property that's kind of in question is this piece back here, which is actually there's some upland area owned by the landing. Um, it's actually Three Acquaintances LLC is the name of the owners, but it is part of the landing parcel. Um, the attorney right now for, for this project is working with them to establish um, some type of ownership for that piece. So before we come back to the board for a site plan, those those pieces will be in place and uh, will be part of the site plan application. Um, we've had the main DEP out there on a site visit. We've, we've looked at um, everything. We've also had our wetland consultants, Longview Partners, out there to classify wetlands. Um, the wetlands back in this portion of the site are indeed coastal wetlands. <coughs> There's some wetland finger that kind of sticks up alongside the road right here. It's kind of indicated by this light green. That is a freshwater wetland. Um, with our proposed relocation of the entrance, we're looking at approximately 900 to 1,000 square feet of wetland fill, which would not require a permit. It's under the 4,300 square foot threshold for the DEP. So the proposed use of the building. The building is going to remain. It's going to be gutted, renovated, and we're looking for, um, right now it's a 5,560 square foot footprint. I think there was some confusion in, in the data we sent, and I think Jay had a little confusion, but the whole first floor is 5,560 square feet. Second floor is about 2,000 square feet, plus or minus a little bit more. So on the first floor, we're looking for restaurant use, on this side, um, it's about 3,500 square feet, plus or minus, looking for 70 indoor seats, 16 bar seats, and an outdoor seating area in the back here um, for about 60 seats. Um, first floor on this side, we're looking at about three retail shops, probably a gift shop, t-shirt kind of shop, um, space for lease, that's about 2,000 square feet. And then there's um, a single apartment on the second floor and we're looking to continue using that as an apartment. Um, we also know that the type of workers that, that um, Sue uses are J1. They're, um, that's a type of work visa that foreign students get. We know there's some issues there, and we're also, we work to resolve those before we make a uh, formal site plan submittal. With that, I'd like to turn it back to the board and answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Um, well, let's see. Robin, let's start with you. I think that you're a good person to start with. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mazur. <laughs> um, your wetland review screening that you did, did um, they happen to screen also, also for <coughs> significant vernal pools? I believe he always does, and there was no mention of it. I can certainly verify that, but he always yes. checks for that. That would be good. Um, as far as parking is concerned, can you talk about how the, um, in the plan set that we have here, the brown outside of the parking lane is yeah. called employee parking? Right, so. Is that still employee parking? It's, right now it is a gravel area, mm -hmm. and what we're looking at is the employees are typically there outside of the, um, the work hours, so they're from before the, the store opens to after it closes. Uh, we're hoping to, to just basically get double park, triple park, whatever it takes to, to maximize the amount of use of already impervious area. Mm -hmm. And whether that re continues to be gravel is what we'd like, but if, you know, we may look at it and decide it needs to be paved, we may decide that there's, we can't fit as many spaces there or not, but that's, right now, that's our thoughts on what, how we can how do How will that. it be accessed? It would, it would be flush with the pavement, so mm -hmm. it would just be right um, out. Yeah, I guess, but what I'm seeing is that there's no free space. It looks like it's all parking lot in front of mm -hmm. the gravel. 
So right. what you're saying is people would pull in too deep? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. They would be locked in unless until there was And then the customers would be the third row of traffic. Yes. Of parking. Correct. Sorry. Um, it, it's pretty tight site, so I didn't see, and maybe I overlooked it where you were thinking maybe trash kind of a thing, or... Oh, it's actually right here. Is it? We have okay. a dumpster right yep. next to the building. Sounds good. And um, I just have a question for Jay. Um, if there have been any recent developments on the, the legal question as far as, um, you know, anything since the staff comments were put out or anything like that? Nope, we haven't seen anything. Um, we had a meeting with the applicant before they submitted. We they made note of the license and the discussion okay. with three okay. friends or whatever it is, yeah. real, uh, LLC, but um, we haven't seen any documentation yet. And um, it's it's still sewer down in that part of town, right? Mm -hmm. So so uh, Scarborough Sanitary right. District was also consulted on this. They they it's took a look at it again. It being sketch plan, they haven't really dove okay. into the details. So certainly okay. that would be advisable for the applicant before yeah. they come back yeah. to have a Just conversation. Just where it's a major yeah. change in usage. Right. I, we know we need a grease okay. trap. And, yeah. I'm all set then. Thank you, Mr. Mazur. Roger. Uh, <coughs> thank you. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, can I assume that the um, the entrance that you're planning for across from the uh, Clam Bake, is that going to be the main entrance for the restaurant? That's correct, yes. And the other entrance will be primarily catering to the retail stores? Yeah, and it, this one is just, it's a, it's an exit only, so it's a parking down oh, this okay, way. Oh, okay, is, okay, okay, it's a, it's okay. Um, and the other thing, um, can you clarify where where the landing? Where, where's their land? It's, it's not the green. It's above the green, right? So, so yeah. There's this large wetland. The building is probably right up okay. in here. So their property comes all the way down to here, oh, and then does. back across this way. So, so it so it's going to be some sort of an agreement between those people and correct. There is an informal easement, and we're working on making that more formal. Okay. Um, and then on the, uh, just out of curiosity, on the apartment that's there now, is it just one party lives in that apartment? I can't say. I know it's one dwelling unit. Okay. I, and I, I, so the question is about these other employees, these G J1 employees, and, and breaking up that one apartment into numerous. I don't believe we're allowed to break that into numerous oh, so units. like a dormitory then, like? Yeah. Basically, I mean, it's, it's an apartment. Okay. And that's, the, I mean, there's some legalities and definitions, and we need to work through that and, and make sure that we have that covered correctly. Uh, okay, I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you. Susan. There are a lot of loose ends in this. Yes, there are. Yeah, okay. The one that we just talked about, um, the TVC allows multi-use building but doesn't allow lodging and boarding houses, so there's that legal thing. And I know you know that, but I just want to make sure it gets into the record that that's a biggie. How is it going to be used? How is it going to be divided up? How many people? In what kind of an environment? That has to be very clearly stated to us. Okay, good. Um, this whole business about um, traffic, the town's ordinance states that when a site has frontage on two streets, we, we obviously have to talk about traffic here mm -hmm. and how what it is you're planning to do with your entrances and your exits. Yep. meets the proper kind of traffic. Again, I know you know that, but I'm the one who's putting it out there. Okay, that has to be done. Um, the curb cuts are, as far as I can see, part of that also. Um, it's all the right-of-way, and it's very complex part. We all know this part of Scarborough. This is a very complex um, intersection. It's complex now as mm -hmm. it sits. I think it is up to the applicant to prove to us that this is going to make it less difficult than it is now, not more difficult, and I'm not convinced from what I can see here. So just put that out there. Is that yep. I just need to make sure that I feel as if this is an improvement, and from what I can see, I'm not convinced. Um, what else? Oh, there's so much. Um, the deliveries thing. Um, handicap parking, but that's all going to be taken care of when we get traffic in there, I'm sure, but the particulars are very refined, and I'm sure that staff will make sure that all of these questions are followed through, but again, just to give a sense of how complicated this is, 
Um, the applicant states that the amount of impervious service will be slightly reduced, so we need details on that and the buffering on all of that. Um, you talked about complete streets. Um, given the majority of site, park, uh, site parking and proposed Pine Point Road access, um, we need legal documentation demonstrating that the legal right of access is there. <laughs> And so far, at this point, I guess we don't have that. I know it's Correct. a test plan. But it's, that's in it's process. In, I think it's important that we put out all of these things that are in process. Um, the 40% reduction, I mean, that has to go to the CBA. I'm going to sit here and wait for a show me. Um, um, And, oh, yes, this is one of the ones I really don't understand at all. The amount of area dedicated to the various uses don't seem to quite work. The building is 2896, 2,000 square feet are dedicated to uh, retail. That leaves 896 square feet for the proposed kitchen and 86 interior associated. Right. So, so rated right right part of my presentation was there's, we added uh, a floor area on this side and this side. And Jay only saw one side of the building, so it's actually a 5,560 square foot footprint. And Jay thought it was 2,800. Okay. That I helps. think there's a note that's yeah. overlaid that yes, couldn't there be was. read. Okay, that helps. All right. Um, where are we with the Shoreland Overlay? I'll get it. Shoreland Overlay District. Does any of that? Does the proposal indeed meet the 75% coverage threshold? Do we know that now? We're, we're already grandfathered over, and we are planning on reducing the amount of impervious. So we'll make it less non-conforming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, fire department and um, review of permitting that will be required by the DEP. Have you been in touch with the DEP at this point? DEP has already been to the site. Okay. I don't want to make it sound like I'm not in favor of this. I am, but it's incredibly complex and a very complex area. So um, we'll be looking forward to resolution of all these picky little details. Thank you. Nick. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> are you anticipating this being a year-round operation? Or is it, is it restaurant? I, I think it's seasonal. Seasonal yeah. restaurant? All right. Um, yeah, my my bigger concern here is the parking, and I think we've struggled with this here in Scarborough, which is bars and restaurants don't seem to have enough parking in Scarborough. I think what makes it further, um, the difficulty even harder in this spot, in this location, is I'm sure you're going to have people who are attempting to utilize the beach to see the occasional free spot in there and, and occupy a spot for what should be a patron. So um, I think anything you can do to help the parking situation and the circulation of that parking lot, whether it's through an acquisition or <coughs> I'm not sure what, how else you could configure this to make it work a little bit better. Maybe there's something there, but I would like to see the parking improved. I understand the uh, situation with the in and out. It's not ideal, but it seems to work okay for the property um, as it's laid out. So um, that being said, a lot more I look forward to seeing later on. Uh, and now I'm just going to comment that not quite sure I'm 100 percent in agreement with your walkability of the Pine Point area as a reason for the 40 percent reduction in required parking spaces. Um, I, I need a little bit more convincing of that. But thank you. You're on. No, thank you. Eileen. Um, yeah, I want to echo some of the, uh, most of the comments my colleagues have already said. In particular, this is kind of exciting, really, um, an opportunity to repurpose this site and beautify it. Um, but before we get there, what I see in front of me now does have some issues, as we've all acknowledged, I think, including yourself. Um, like, like Nick says, the walkability and how that equates to a 40 percent reduction, I would just have to <coughs> uh, see more evidence that 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 um, equation is legit rather than just um, a statement saying so. Um, do, if, if you were, are you looking to acquire the um, landing land or have some agreement to use it? Some agreement to use it. Because um, agreement. agreement. Could, could that be, uh, be as much as uh, to use that area as parking? Yeah, we're currently, you know, proposing bits of it are into that 
parcel that, right that here. That gray is the landing area as it is? The, the, the line right here, the dash Oh, okay, here. I see. So it's just a sliver of the, the paved and the, the gravel in here. So the white area to the uh, west, if you will, the tan area, that's not? That's the uh, forest, this <laughs> big, thick uh, shrubs. Okay. All right. Um, so even if you do the, get that agreement, I, I'm not so sure how it's going to be configured to satisfy what what this lot might demand for parking. Um, <coughs> I mean, right away, even coming into the site, you know, you have some spaces where uh, folks backing out would uh, would create a uh, a stacking issue on Pine Point almost immediately, I would say. Uh, I, also, I'm not all that uh, excited about the fact that the parking lot being full and then having uh, cars on the gravel area um, blocked from being able to exit or enter. I think that needs some work. Um, the dumpster area, how would you access that? I mean, let's say, you know, unless, would, um, unless there's hours of operation where... Yeah, it would be off hour. Same as deliveries would be off hours. I see, okay. Um, and uh, for staff, the uh, the analysis by the applicant, uh, their grandfather status is that is that accurate? It, it's certainly grandfathered, and um, as our, our sort of our plans indicated, because it is already non-conforming, we really need to understand the full extent of the development. But it's okay to repurpose and re. It's and okay use to it repurpose. There may be. I think the floodplain standards uh, are one thing that could have um, could potentially have significant alterations if the building needs to be elevated. Mm -hmm. um, that's a possibility. Um, again, that this um, uh, Lee Allen and his outfit certainly right. have done a number of elevation certificates in town, so I'm sure they can pull together the necessary information. Okay. Again, you know, the, like everyone said before, there, there's a lot of work to. To, uh, to do here before uh, I can really wrap my arms around it. But the concept is exciting, certainly. Uh, the future landscape area, it's always nice to think down in that area. I think it lacks that uh, division between the, the curb and the uh, parking lots down there. So this is an opportunity to kind of green some space up also. So yeah. that's good. And my final concern is I don't know where I'm going to get my oil. Is Conroy still going to be in business? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Is delivery still free? <laughs> well, that's good to know because uh, I've enjoyed their service for many years, and uh, I'm glad to hear that I will continue to do so. Um, are you going to get rid of the dinosaur, the green dinosaur in the building? It's gone already? Um, but anyway, um, thank you for bringing it forward, and uh, I look forward to uh, your next trip back and uh, crossing some of these T's, dotting some of these I's, because... Um, it, there's a lot of reasons to, to feel good about this. It just needs some work between yes. now and then. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Me. I have a litany of things to do. Um, and I respect the comments from my fellow members that it would be great to see something different on that corner than now exists. Having said that, having gone over this uh, in detail in my own mind. Right now, I feel you're putting a square peg in a round hole uh, as far as what you're trying to do with that particular location. And let me go through the specifics of what I'm getting at. And first of all, the legal opinions are very important. Let me start with that, that, that you, uh, staff has, has mentioned. Um, as far as I am aware the apartment is non-compliant so that, uh, uh, that there's only one permitted at this time and they intend on putting a variety of seasonal workers up there. Am I correct in that? Yep. So that needs to be refined and, 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 and make sure that there is the, the legality of that and fits the ordinance. Um, I too have a problem with the 40% reduction. And having said that, I, and I understand walking, which is not going to be easy in that particular area, because that's still a difficult corner. Um, before I could go ahead and, and vote for this, I'd have to see legal documents from the DOT and from the landing, rather than a handshake and a <laughs> verbal agreement that, that they can use those parking facilities. Uh, because right now, uh, the 
amount of parking that's there is not conforming with what would be needed to have a restaurant in retail there. So I, I would have to see that in writing. Um, just to uh, also re 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 uh, reiterate, it is a flood plan zone. So, um, and a, it, from what I heard from staff, it's also a shoreland, shoreland overland. Mm -hmm. So that would all have to be dealt with. In, in, uh, uh, and as Jay said, the building is also non-conforming, so the Board of Appeals has to be brought into the process at some time also. Correct? Potentially, the yeah, Board of Appeals will need to be. Okay. Um, There are the circulation concerns. I, I agree with that. That was brought up about how things are going to um, move. Uh, and according to what you presented, Bill Bray is going to do a traffic analysis. Yep. So we'll need to get that at, at the appropriate time. Uh, <coughs> curb cuts. Clarify. I, I know you mentioned it, but just clarify it again for me, how, how you're going to deal with the curb cuts. There are two right now? Two. Right now, it's it's kind of wide open, but the, the main curb cut comes in right across here. We're actually looking toward future intersection improvements, trying to push those curb cuts as far away from the intersection as possible, which, according to Bill, is just about the only thing we can do here. And it's my understanding that the Scavo Public Works needs to be brought into that process if you're going to deal with the curb cuts. They typically always are, yeah. Okay, just trying to pull everything together here. Um, we talked about the liberties. Um, we talked about the dumpster. Um, still want to see the specific calculations of the amount of impervious area uh, that's up yeah. in the year, year a little bit. Uh, and as my colleague said, landscaping should be, it's a good opportunity to do some landscaping, I'm not sure how much it can do. Uh, and again, the justification of the of the uh, reduction, the 40% reduction. Uh, and, and, and okay, what else do I have here? Um, I think that we've sort of for the time being touched on everything. I mean, there's a lot to touch on right here. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and before I let you go, um, I'd love to see this work, okay, personally speaking, because I think something needs to be done in that corner. But it's a tough corner, and right now I, I, I still feel that you're putting a round peg into you know a square hole, um, and it's an, up to you to come to before the board with all these issues, dealing with all these issues to convince me and others that it's the right project for the right location. Any other comments from the board? Go ahead. Yeah, I just have a question for staff. Um, Jay, on uh, regarding the complete streets, has there been any um, consideration of changing the way that <coughs> that curve is right there? Or is that? Is yep. So, way? so the town is in very early stages of working with the DOT on redesigning that intersection. And actually, uh, I think what you can see overlaid on the plan here is a very initial concept, and I should state it's the concept that is designed to demonstrate what sort of the maximum area of intersection improvements might be. Um, this in no way represents the direction, It's as I said, Things are very, we're not even at preliminary design, we're at pre-preliminary design, I sort of call it. Um, so yes, there have, have been some discussions in that regards and, and certainly we'll um, keep the applicants uh, informed as we move forward. And the reason I forward. bring that up is um, if, if there was consideration of making that just a regular T intersection, you know, a 90 degree intersection, mm -hmm. I would assume that DOT would have more land and Maybe that would afford you folks some well possible time. It, 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 no. It's possible. Um, and the only other thing I was just kind of curious about on the FEMA floodplains mm -hmm. is that is that set in stone now, or is that still being? 
considered that whole? Well, the, the, the flood plans that are enacted are set in stone. Okay. Um, so the, the, I think you're referring to the plans that were proposed back in 2009 yeah. and that have been kicked down the road every six months. Surprisingly, I just got an email about a month ago saying they're kicked down the road another year. So okay. it's we really don't know when they're going to come out with their new preliminary preliminary maps. Um, so yes, uh, we're still operating under the, I think they're from 1985 or something, yeah. that okay. type map. Any other comments? Come back and convince me. Will you? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Great, thank you. B and E Enterprises Inc. is requesting site plan amendment review for Cobble Hill Trailer Sales, 148 Pleasant Hill Road, Assessor's Map R78, Lot 45. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just noted, uh, this application is for the board for a site plan amendment uh, for a property located on Pleasant Hill Road. The site is actually in the industrial district. Um, and maybe some more of the more critical issues that have been flagged that really resolve, revolve around it being in the aquifer protection uh, overlay district as well. Um, to that end, um, you will receive staff comments um, from town planner and town engineer, as well as comments from Woodard and Kern. Um, we also had a peer review for the traffic and uh, traffic analysis, um, which um, really had no issues there. Um, in terms of the aquifer protection um, uh, requirements, there's regulations related to the uh, timing and style of stormwater management implementation, um, uh, infrastructure and implementation. Uh, also, there's details regarding uh, around floor drains, uh, particularly the need uh, to um, really understand exactly what, what the utiliz utilization of the site is, what might be going into those drains as well as a requirement that they be uh, registered with the state. Um, other issues that staff flag through our site plan uh, review ordinance and, and zoning ordinance, uh, the applicant is seeking reduction in parking. Of the, the site would require 56 spaces. They're seeking a re reduction to 48. Um, this case might be a little different than the other one we talked about where the ordinance does provide an opportunity for if the applicant can, can demonstrate where additional spaces might be located on the site should the future need arise, um, that then this board has the discretion to be able to approve those but not require them to be built. So provide they're shown on a site plan. Um, if they can't be demonstrated on the site, then this applicant would also need to visit the Board of Appeals. But it seems like there's a significant area out there that eight more spaces may, may well be able to fit, but we shall see. Uh, our comments uh, should also have other uh, comments related to fire department requirements, uh, site lighting, the ex existing landscaping along the frontage of the of the road, um, among some others. And with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you and and ready to answer questions as needed. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to the applicant. Good evening, Keith Gray from Sabio Technics, on behalf of Mr. Mayetta, Vini Enterprises. Um, here to seek amended site plan approval of of a uh, parcel off from Mayetta Drive, Pleasant Hill Road in Scarborough, obviously. Um, the applicant is seeking to to construct a 30, approximately 3,500 square foot addition um, as phase one. That would include the removal of a um, degrading salt shed and in place construct an addition uh, with multiple bays, I believe two or three bays for um, small warehouse facilities for landscape companies, um, just trade trades in general. Um, that's phase one and we were looking to originally when I'm talking to Jay just try to uh, just do that phase without constructing the stormwater management treatment um, but after discussion, we've decided to, to just do the stormwater treatment as phase one as well. Um, that being said, I mean, the, the we're actually not treating phase one. We'd be treating a different part of the site as part of a treatment for the, as required by the aquifer protection overlay district. Uh, moving on from there, though, phase two would include addition off from 
the Cobble Hill Trail sales uh, with additional bays for maintenance, and they should do sales of trailers there as well. Um, uh, traffic flow through the site, basically end of, enter here, taking away some of the curb cut. Right now it's, it's pretty much wide open uh, along Mayetta Drive for access into the site. Um, and we're closing that up and providing additional green space with uh, proposed landscaping, basically on the same that is out there now. Um, related to parking, we reserve parking along this area for tractor trailers as they use it for sales and for street frontage. And we're providing 48 spaces, um, as Jay indicated, and with a reduction, but we've also provided um, overflow parking. So there's ample parking available on site. We just we don't feel like we need it, whereas it's mostly industrial trailers uh, with, with limited employees. Um, let me just show. So as far as the treatment goes, uh, if you look at your watershed plan, I don't have it here, but it basically takes most of the existing area on this side and some of the, about half the impervious area from the existing roof of Cobble Hill Trail Sales and treats this whole area here that's otherwise untreated currently. Um, along with the, the build and addition of phase two will become the removal of a above ground storage tank that's been discontinued for a couple of years now. Guardrail, a <coughs> light pole, <coughs> Uh, and removal of a catch basin. <coughs> and then that would require a installation of a catch basin here to, to gather the storm water around this area and route it to the mis municipality infrastructure. Uh, trash will be located in the back corner here, uh, approximately 20, 23 <coughs> feet from the building, enclosed in a, in a uh, enclosure, fence enclosure. Um, what else? That would, that would include phase two. So phase one would be the building addition over the, uh, the 3,500 square foot building addition and the, the installation of the stormwater management pond or the grass underdrain soil filter. Phase two would include the removal of all those items um, to make room for the addition. And that's approximately 4,900 square feet. Um, and that would also include the, the, the expansion for the parking. There's a little bit of pavement expansion down here and overlay of the sites. And then phase three would include, would include a, an additional uh, 3,100 square feet approximately for a build out for Cobble Hill Trail sales. With that, I turn it over to the board for any questions. Thank you. Well, since this is the first time we're hearing this, it's open to public discussion. Uh, if there's anybody here from the public who would like to discuss this particular matter, please come forward. I don't think there is, so we'll close it to the public. And Nick, I'll start with you this time. Well, <coughs> um, I, don't, I don't have much for comments on this. I, you know, I, I think uh, I'll take Jay's comment to heart, which is. I don't think the reduction in the parking spaces um, for for this type of business. I don't think that bothers me a whole lot. I think if you could find a spot on the plans to kind of identify an overflow area, perfectly satisfied with that um, as a as a reasonable way to to get you through the process here. Um, <coughs> glad to hear that you're going to do the stormwater in the first part of the phasing. That's that's a good move. So that, I really don't have much else to add. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Uh, I too would be in favor of your reduction to 48 to show it, show how it can be built if you need it. Um, and I appreciate you closing up the curbs like that and redefining them. I think that makes for a nicer site. And um, replacing that with uh, green space, I imagine, is that what you said? Your intention yes. was landscaping. Um, you said that the uh, grass underdrained soil filter would be part of phase one. Because uh, the plants suggest it's phase three, so um, you might have to make some amendments. Yeah, that's been that's been revised. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and maybe there's others too. I think I wrote down something else. I can't see my notes. Just make sure that 
what's it, what it says on the plan as far as when it's going to happen and what mm -hmm. phase is, is accurate. But uh, no, not, not a lot to add here. I uh, uh, wish you luck, and uh, I would be in favor of uh, moving this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, that's a good question. The question was about this white section, what it's being used for. Uh, it's broken into small spaces so that small companies can lease it for. Is it the addition going to do the same thing? It is, yes. Okay. That was question number one. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, I went out there and took a look around, and um, I'm just a little confused. I'm looking at the um, left side of the building that is not going to be phase one, that's closer to Pleasant Hill Road, yes. There are angular, angular parking shown there. Yeah, right here. there. Okay. When I was out there the other day, they were all parked under the trees. Um, is that because there's not enough room for? I mean, what's what's the story with? It? Well, they try to put them. They're putting them on the grass right now, and I want to fix that so that they're not parking them on the grass. So we're gonna. The, right now, the grass comes out into here. Okay. And there's so. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, We're leaving a 20-foot uh, travel way for automobiles to drive back and forth. This is just for them to park those few trailers that you've seen there. And phase two and three are going to be, I know you said, but okay, so what's there now is white, and that's used for the... Um, Pablo Hill trailer sales. What's the next two? They're going to be used for the same thing. More they, of the same. Mm-hmm. They they only uh, maintain only trailers, the over-the-road trailers you've seen down there. They don't do engine repairs and things like that, so it's a little bit cleaner than the typical maintenance that we're used to out there. So. And again, when I, when I look at the sketch that came with the presentation, to the right of the building that's going to be phase two and three, there's all of these nice angular parking places that you provide. I think that's what that is. You know, up next to the building, you all of that, all those parking, those are parking for the trailer trucks while they're waiting to be maintained, or they're waiting. Oh no. They're parked going this way. Yes, uh, yes. Right now they're parked a different way than this. This is how it's going to be when the new section is built. That's going to open up um, more. Um, I'm thinking about the. Um, um, yeah, this is the water room. Storm water. Storm water. I think it will help with it. We're going to reloc relocate a catch basin that's in this area, when, and we're going to move it out here. Okay. So we're going to we're going to be able to collect the water a little more uh, okay. systematically. It's going to be a better flow for the water. But um, we are treating the water in the front of the site, which isn't being treated now. But the water that's in the back of the house, the back of the site, will continue to be the way it is now. Correct. We're going to see to it that we don't disturb that. Even if we have to reshape it a little bit, we we left some room over here so we could reshape it if we uh, if we see that we're getting into roots or anything. We're pretty confident that it can be that shape. Yeah, those trees are beautiful along there. Yeah. Well, as the landowner, I can assure you that I I feel the same way. Signage will remain the same. Yep. Um, if you do what you're saying you're going to do, I don't have any problems with it. I think it's going to be an improvement. Not that it's a terrible lot right now, mm. but it does need to be spiffing up. It does. Yes, it does. If you, uh, you know, live up to all of this, it will definitely be. I am concerned about the aquifer, but I'm sure that my engineering team will be doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go on, for the record, name. I'm sorry, my name is Vincent Meyer. I'm the 
the uh, president of Vienna Enterprises. Thank you. Raj? Um, I don't think I have any further questions right now. I think there are, I was, I was just kind of curious about the trailer parking and access to the phase one building, but I could see <coughs> where it is, you know, where that traffic is going to flow. So, um, I don't have any other questions. I think most of, most of the questions by my colleagues were. Thank you. Robin? Thank you. Um, if I could have you show me, I'm looking at your application. Uh, here it does say under 9A that you'll disturb one or more acres of area. Can you can you show me where the that disturbed area is on the plan? Yeah, it's probably turned over. Well, I get grading here. Um, yeah, I mean, along the perimeter for disturbance, it's basically the shaded area here. Because mm -hmm. you're you're over. Mm -hmm. You consider overlaying disturbance. Mm -hmm. And will you have a, a, a lay down area? Because what I'm getting at is um, on section 12, it says, does this application require a permit? And you said no. And if you do disturb more than one acre, you will need a main construction general permit. Correct, and I've already I've already put that application application together and like a PBR kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, with that said, too, I think one of the other things I'm interested in seeing is a little more detail about the post construction inspection and maintenance of the under drain soil filter, the the relocated catch basins, and the landscaping. Um, Generally, when there's a post construction inspection and maintenance um, plan, which is generally required in these instances, it includes all of those things. So, um, Jay, I'm wondering how I, how we maybe put that into, um, or maybe Angela has already thought of these things. In the terms post of post construction inspection and maintenance requirements. Um, there's there's a couple things going yeah. on that make it to to me, you know, you're in the aquifer protection mm -hmm. zone. We've we've talked about in the staff comments the the close vertical offset of the storm water to the sewer, and then yep. also within the landscaping. I, I just feel like a a real tight post construction inspection and maintenance. Um, so I think there was a plan in here. In there is. Am I, I did I miss it? What I, I thought there was. Or let me see. I remember a comment because I I saw it in some, I saw I some also trust in our engineers when it comes to this level of uh, yeah but, no me so, too yeah I, 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 yeah, I believe Angela has, has requested that as well she has yes. okay because I did see some notes on on sheet six mm -hmm. of nine there are some general notes but I think yeah so I see here under water and currents comments they noted that the inspection and maintenance maintenance plan should include provisions for the requirements of section 6a of chapter 419 of the town code perfect so perfect yeah okay so it's been addressed and it's looking it would be looked at with a future submission um, okay and, and actually if you don't mind if I might um, sort of jump in on the aquifer protection one of the things that our ordinance requires um, is that prior to the board being able to take action, that any floor drains need to be registered with the state. Um, and so I don't know if that has been done yet. Um, that's, that's one of the requirements in our aquifer protection overlay district. And so uh, I guess if, if it hasn't been done, what I might offer is it sounds like board members are generally comfortable the way things are headed. Um, what we might be able to do is consider this item as a consent item moving forward, provided they provide revised plans. That means it's just on a board agenda for essentially a quick, mm -hmm. a quick motion, no, no further discussion really needed unless there something comes up. But, um, so I just sort of put that out there. And again, uh, Mr. Maeda may have something to offer. Yeah, about the floor drains, I think that you brought it up a couple of times. It's an interesting issue because um, we've owned property out here for about 25 years and we you know, back in the day when the floor drains were just extended outdoors and expelled onto the ground, those were state registered uh, floor drain systems. They had to go through grease and oil separated, same as this. Um, God, I think it was maybe 20 years ago when Skyro uh, required us to put in 
Grecian oil separators and tie them into a sanitary system, and then they're monitored frequently. We clean them twice a year. Um, they're just uh, they're not registered with the state. I'm not. I don't believe that discharges that are discharged into the sewage system need to be regulated, but we sure can we, c we can sure ask, and if there's a method to do it, we're certainly happy to do it. We have no, no issues with it, but we're, we're complying here in the existing facility the way we've been required to do for years, and um, if there's something new that we need to do, we certainly do it. Yeah, Vinny, Vinny, uh, when I met with staff, that was one of the first things they pointed out to me. It, it's, it, we don't have any wiggle room with that. That's a ordinance that's a requirement. Uh, so um, I think the way Jay is presenting it is a good way, and that is after I poll the committee that we can make that a, once you have that, uh, a consent item that so that uh, it wouldn't require another whole long dissertation. Sure. Yeah. No, that's great. Thank you. Anything else, Mom? Um, No, I just had a question on signage, but um, it sounds like nothing's going to change. Yeah, they're leaving the signage so it is. Um, I just want to bring up one minor little thing. We, we, we were going to do the detention when we changed the front of the site. We're going to do that now as part of phase one. There is a little bit of earthwork that's required for a little swale that comes along here to bring the water in, and there's some, this, this part of this trailer park, and there's some lawn that gets removed and so forth. This, this may also be done, I just want to be clear, during phase one, just because um, it's sort of part of that, that area of construction that we were going to do all at once. We, we perhaps ought to do it as all part of phase one, so I just didn't want to uh, not mention that. No. My turn. Um, I am in agreement with comments uh, that we've heard uh, so far, but a couple of things that also need to be tied together. And one is lighting. I don't know if that's been clarified. According to staff, that that need be uh, uh, where the location of lighting is going to be. And so yeah, we've now we've now shown uh, one, two, three, four, five wall packs on phase two and three, and phase one will include wall pack, one wall pack. So they're shown on the plans now, the site plan. Well, well I'm, I'm sorry. Will there be any remaining um, uh, uh, pole mounts? No. All, all wall packs. Great. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> snow storage. All right. Snow storage is stated to be in the back part where the overflow parking is at the front corner. We've also provided boulders on here so it's not dumped into the underdrained soil filter, as typically is. And um, one of the comments that came from staff is the uh, uh, fire department has indicated that buildings were required to install to install fire uh, alarm and sprinkler system. Yeah, the applicants are aware of that. That's okay. Okay. Uh, seems that you're pretty doing pretty good to cover all the bases. Um, <laughs> other than I think that big thing then is that floor drainage registration. I think that's what is really standing out. Mm -hmm. I think all these other things can be tied up very easily. Um, so that's where we leave it, right? That we once we have that, we can go to consent. Do I hear any other comments? From I just want to point out too. I just want to thank Mr. Chase for because we I submitted this a long time ago. We've been working together through staff comments to get this to where it is today. So appreciate that. Well, Mr. Mayer usually does very good and, and is very compliant when we make recommendations. So I, I'm feeling comfortable with that. Good. So with that. Back in your boat to get that registration and back to us for a consent. Sounds good. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Having done that, is there a town planner's report? Uh, yeah, just want to bring up an email around maybe a week or three ago about uh, getting together with a workshop. We had talked about a street. Uh, uh, complete street uh, uh, item that we're going to do a few meetings ago, which ran late, and then a couple other items we want to add on to the agenda. So um, just looking for everyone to see if before our next meeting, August 29th, works for folks. I, that was the predominant response I received from the email. So um, 
If I don't hear anything that's a major conflict, we're going to assume and go ahead with that, and we'll send around an agenda um, on that shortly. Um, Jay, was that at 6 o'clock? It probably will start okay. at 6 o'clock. We'll see what the agenda looks like, maybe 5.30, I don't know. We <laughs> want to be sure we leave time, but uh, time for pizza, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Better than later. laughs> Um, yeah, well, yes. Uh, that is all I have to report. Is there an administrative amendment report? I do not have anything to report this meeting. About correspondence? I don't believe the board received any that the staff is aware of. Planning board comments. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, right before the meeting, I was made aware that um, after exhaustive uh, investigation and review of our procedures and processes, uh, that uh, Roger Bealey would indeed be eligible to serve as secretary on this board this year. That being said, I'd like to make a motion. That sounds like a headline. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to nominate Roger Bealey as secretary of the planning board for uh, the current year. How, how much is the stipend on that? Be rather not double today. the zero you're getting now. No, we. I think. Yeah. Okay. Is there a second to that? There is a second. Any comment? Yay. <laughs> uh, all in favor? That's your name. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do have one comment. Uh, we on the. Transportation Committee uh, took a walk down uh, Black Point Road to see the renovations that were done uh, on Black Point and on Eastern Road. Um, and even though it was a pain in my neck living on Winnick's neck uh, <laughs> while they did it, uh, I think they did a good job. Uh, I'm very pleased with uh, what was done and how it was done. And, uh, uh, also, we, we looked at the, the light restructuring that was done on the corner of Route 1 and Black Point where it's made a lot easier for pedestrians, and I have seen where it does work. So I think that the recommendations that have come through that committee to the town council and then implemented uh, are, are doing pretty well. Yes, Roger. Uh, I, I have a question for the esteemed member of the Transportation Committee. I put Oak Hill. The uh, signals, the um, the yellow perimeter of the signals. Yellow border. <coughs> what are the what's the yellow for? Is, is that flash when no. a pedestrian? No, walking? it just makes it a makes more visible. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. So. Yep. It's, okay. Yep. And, and then <coughs> I also notice there's large. There's a couple of large rectangular. It looks like, almost like a solar panel. There as well. There are signs that we'll talk about no right turn that light up. Maybe these are, these are up high. Mm, as are the. Mm, I don't. About, about I, height of the signal. Yeah, I haven't been as close to all the details. I'm not aware of any anything that's solar. That's um, that has solar power attached to it. Um, I think so, Roger. I, I think it may be the sign. It's sort of up near the lights. Over to the right, if yeah, you will. Yeah, right, right where the pole yep. goes up. Yeah. Up high. Yeah, I think um, if you'll you'll see at night, if a pedestrian pushes a button, it'll stop or intended to indicate to people who are trying to take a right on red that they should perhaps not do that, and hopefully they comply. It, it's mainly all of it was to be more pedestrian, mm -hmm. you know, favorable, and I think. Under the circumstances and the way things are, it's the best that can be done. With, with, you know. yeah, I thought those yellow rims probably flash when a pedestrian. No, <laughs> they don't. Right. No, the only flashing is down near the Eastern Road. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the only one that's flashing. I still say we need a tunnel. We need a what? We need a tunnel. A tunnel? Mm-hmm. Like I agree with you. <laughs> it's the only answer. No other comments. Do I hear? Move to adjourn. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to. Why don't we salute the flag again? So move. So move, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. All in favor. Thank, Thank you for the evening. Here one's left.